What's up everybody, this is Jake Berkey from Busted Knuckle Off-Road and today we're going to show you how we build our Rock Bouncer chassis. If you were to build your own chassis, it would take weeks, if not longer. You gotta keep in mind the suspension geometry, the way the engine transmission and transfer case all sit in the vehicle. You gotta figure out the seating position, how your shocks are gonna mount, how your panels are gonna lay out, and that process can take an, a crazy amount of time. Now that we have the right equipment, we're more efficient and we can build a chassis in a matter of days. Now when it came to getting the right equipment, we gave Bentec a call and they got us this CNC tube dragon and then also came down to help us get it set up. It's like Christmas for big kids. It's here! It's got like a, a shock watch on it. So if like you get a little too rough with her, she turns red. And then right here, it's got a tilt watch on it. So if it gets tilted too far, then it turns red and nothing's red. So that means we're good, right? Nothing's good broken? Go. All right, man. Cool. Well, this is uh, Bo, and this is Jonathan from Bentec. They're here, they have brought all the cold with them. Where are y'all from? Minnesota. Minnesota. Yep, Osceola, Wisconsin. So they cannot deny that we haven't had any snow this year. They come down and now it's snowing and iced over. So you guys have definitely brought the snow with you. But we're about to put this machine together and by the end of today, we'll have it up and moving around a little bit. And then tomorrow we're gonna cut some tubing. The cool thing about this machine is that if you're a small business and you're trying to expand, you don't have to worry about having big equipment like this forklift. You can actually get this thing delivered on a lift gate and use a pallet jack just to move it inside. Once it's inside, it tears down, you can install it, doesn't take up a bunch of room. It's a really awesome thing for some guy who's trying to just get that competitive edge. Take a file to it. Yeah, I mean the cut's really nice. All right, so last night was an awesome night. We actually were able to get the dragon set up and we were able to get parts cut, which is a huge accomplishment, especially because it was during an ice storm. So these guys were able to come in here, get this machine set up, and started working at probably about 10, 11 o'clock, and by two o'clock, we were cutting parts. Uh, you can see right here, this is some of the stuff that we've just been playing with, and uh, it's been working really good. So today, now that we have the machine set up, we're gonna start working on how to bend all of the tubing and set the dies up and all that stuff to get the machine calibrated. So that's a really cool thing. Uh, we've got our Bailey bender here. It's a RDB 250. Um, appreciate uh, the guys from Bailey helping us out with this thing. It's a really cool machine. You can see right here, we've got program mode and manual mode. Um, it's super, super fast. So check this out. So today we're going to be playing with the dragon, with the bender, and making these two units communicate with each other so that now we can take our bend diagrams from our CAD model, reference the bend radius from the machine, from the bender, import it into the dragon, and then we have all the pieces of the puzzle so that we can start creating the baddest chassis on the planet. Stay tuned. All right, this is Bo from Bentech. He's gonna show us how to do the bend calibration that calibrates our bender to the dragon so that we know exactly where the marks need to be made to start and stop the bend. So Bo, take us through real quick how we're gonna do this. This is super important. Sure, yeah, so once you're setting up your die for your uh, dragon, you just go in the die library. Um, our software is gonna calculate the stretch material 
It'll also calculate uh, where you actually place in the bender versus where the bend starts. So it'll, it'll uh, calculate all that for you so you know exactly where to line it up in the bender. Um, first we'll just add our, add our die in here. Uh, so we'll just need a, the size of die. What size die? It's a six inch center line radius. Okay. And then we have this uh, little wizard utility. It'll just walk us through step by step on the calibration process. Uh, basically, we'll, we'll cut a tube uh, and then we'll bend it to 90 degrees, measure both legs, and then it calculates the rest from there. Uh, so we'll select our model of bender. RDB 250. That Bailey RDB. Yep, that's a record. And if it's not on the list, you can just do rotary draw or compression bender, whatever kind you have. Um, center line radius, was it uh, five? Six. Six. And then outside the MR tube, in this case, you got the 1.75. Right. <laughs> Okay, now we have to cut and measure a piece of material. Uh, so we recommend about five times the, the CLR. So in this case, we do uh, 30 inches. All right, so here we have a piece of tubing cut. Bo is gonna go through the process real quick on the bender calibration. So we've got a 30 inch piece of tubing cut. Yep, so we'll go ahead and go next. Um, now we have to place a mark on the tube. Uh, we already have our mark on our tube here. There's our mark. Um, now we just have to input the location of that mark. All right, so basically what we're doing, we gotta measure each of these leg lengths. Um, once we do that, it'll calculate the amount of stretch that took place when we bent the tubing. I'm gonna go here, so we got about 11 and uh, 11 sixteenths. Put that in, so we'll just take note of that, measure the other end, put it in the software, and then it'll calculate out the rest for us. Here we have the little bit of, of uh, spring back from the, the, the bender. Um, here we have the calibrated CLR, so it actually uh, will give us the stretch of material so we get the proper cut length. Um, and then here we have the bend location offset, so depending on where you line up in your die, you, the line up might be a little bit different than where the bend actually starts in the die. Um, so this compensates for that as well. So once, once the software is all calculated with that, we can just click add die and then save that off to our software. Let's name it six inch die. And there we have it. We're good to go, right? Good to go. All right. <laughs>
to be able to build the chassis, then import it. And I think that's super important because, you know, SolidWorks is an expensive program. And whenever I first started doing all this stuff, it was really nice to be able to have a program that I could design a chassis in and, um, you know, get down the road as far as, you know, building the chassis. Like with, with this, uh, they have a sheet metal module, so you could actually do all your sheet metal. You can do all of your, your tubing and everything else, and you can lay out your chassis, and you could build a buggy, no problem. Um, but for the guys that are, you know, versed in other CAD programs, whether it's SolidWorks or, or Fusion or Katia, you can actually design all this stuff in those, uh, in those realms and then import step files into the computer. So this is our 2021 ride chassis. And you can see that the front end has been lowered a ton um, just because of popular demand. You know, guys, the perception was that you couldn't see over the shock towers. Um, if you ever sat in the buggy, you would go, oh, you can actually see really well because you kind of saw through the tubing. Well, unfortunately, we have to, I don't want to say unfortunately, we just, we have to make sure that we manage perception. Whether it is or it isn't, um, it doesn't matter. It matters what the end user thinks about the chassis and the way it looks. So we lowered the front end on this thing three and a half inches and uh, we're able to basically keep a lot of the same features as the 2020 ride because it's just a very, very popular chassis. And today we're going to start pulling bars out of this thing and one at a time we're going to start bending these things. So um, let's take just for instance, we're going to take this bar, we're going to click on it, we're going to go to part details and there we go. There's that one bar that we're going to actually cut. Now we're going to take this bar, we're going to send it to our dragon behind here. And then the dragon is actually going to come in and it's going to notch both sides. It's going to put the part number on the side of the tubing and then it's going to put our starts and stops on all of our bends so that we can go to our bender and actually make this part. So we have all these bars ready to rock and we've got them organized in the system by sizes and by part number. So if you look at this right here, this is a 30, right? So BKT 31P. That's just uh, one of the bars that are in our assembly. And we have a work package that matches these bars so we know exactly where they need to go. Super organized way to do this. Now, if you look right here, you can actually see that bullseye right there. And that bullseye is where we're gonna start and stop our bends. And then this number right here is how many degrees we're gonna bend it to, including the snapback. So check this bad boy out, man. Josh McAllister, you have one bad to the bone buggy coming out here. This is gonna be our second 2021 ride chassis. This is our first turnkey and the 2021 platform. And you can tell just by looking at some of these notches, just how, how tight everything is. You know, we basically just tack everything together then come over and weld as much as we can. But you can just look through the whole chassis and just see like, you got three pieces of tubing to coming together and the gap is just absolutely nothing. So the process is working really well. The Bentec Dragon is absolutely killing it. We're gonna take the part and pull it into the Dragon CAM software. This is, you know, if you're familiar with CAM and CAD, this is basically what runs the Tube Dragon. Um, kind of like, you know, Sheet CAM or something like that if you had um, any other type of software. So then we have Mach 3 that runs in the background that basically controls all your G-code and all that stuff. But we don't need to see that. Everything is right here on this really nice panel. So we basically load our material in and the laser turns on and it tells us where we need to position our piece of tubing for the next cut. So we got this little laser that comes down and sits right there. And that's gonna tell us exactly where to position our, our tubing so that whenever we make our next cut, it doesn't get into the previous cut, okay? Um, we have an optional engraver that we hooked up on ours that's really awesome. It helps us do all of our engraving and everything. But we're going to go ahead and fire this off so y'all can see how this thing works. I think it's important to note that on this particular bar, you can see it shows a start of bend and then a 50.6 degrees. But if you look right here, it engraved this side. The machine is actually smart enough to know that once we take this bar and we put it in our bender and we bend it, 
it's gonna pull all the way up to that point right there and it would pull that material through the die if it actually cut that spot instead of marking that spot. So this machine has what, you know, it's like called collision detection or whatever. It basically allows you to ensure that whenever you get a part cut and it's time to bend it, that you don't suck this piece of material through your dies and also gives you the spot to cut to if you have to manually cut. So this particular bar is gonna have to be manually cut and that is super important so that you don't damage your dies and you also are not in a situation where you're ruining tubing. Cost saver. Of course, we use a little WD-40 spray. This gel lubricant works really well for these dies. Put that into place. Okay, we got our bullseye lined up right at the edge of the die. And then we tighten this down to our pressure that we use on all these. And then you just type in what's actually on the piece of tubing. So 50.6 is what's written on the tubing because the software is smart enough to know that 50.6 degrees on the bender will snap back to the correct amount of degrees for the part. 50.6 degrees on our Bailey bender. A little foot pedal action. And that's exactly what I was talking about. If that machine would have cut this, it would have pulled it through the die and damaged the die. The software is smart enough to know that whenever we go to build this part, that the part can't be built by notching the tube first. So now we have a perfectly bent bar, no wasted scrap, and we know exactly where to put our notch. How cool is that? Now that it's been a few months and we've got all of our equipment dialed in, our production has went through the roof. We've got the chassis table doing exactly what it needs to be doing, holding all the tubing straight. We've got the bender bending great and we've got the tube dragon just absolutely dialed in. We went from two buggies last year to five already this year, plus we have three more that are on the docket to be done by the end of the year. And we've done a whole bunch of rollers and chassis that I'm not even counting. If you're the type of guy who's hands-on, I can tell you from experience, building your own chassis only sounds like a good idea. When you start building the chassis, you'll realize that there's a whole lot of thought process that goes into an entire build like this. Where the shocks have to go, where the motor transmission transfer case has to sit, where your suspension is gonna droop out, how it's gonna articulate, all that stuff makes a difference. These chassis are computer designed, they're modeled, and you can see from our experiences that they work extremely well. If you're in the market for a buggy, but you don't have the budget for a turnkey or a roller, a chassis is a great place to start.